Hello reformers and welcome back to Mountain Blade Warband. Now, when we left off, this is one of those things where you just kind of have to go under the radar and do a huge amount of work off screen. And I've spent, uh, I don't know, I think the last two hours just trying to get this message to come up. And finally, Sultan Hakim's generosity has run out. And as you can see, he has finally said, No, I'm sorry, you're not going to get that castle. Yeah, so basically what I've been doing is looking around for the weakest thieves in the area. And basically, that was actually really quite hilarious as well because, oh yeah, by the way, all of the factions are now at war with the Saranids. So this probably couldn't have happened at a better time. But anyway, th that also gave me the opportunity to take some Vagia thieves if I so desired. At the time, there was actually nothing that I really needed to do and technically, yeah, it, it wasn't really making any difference whatsoever in, in what I chose to do. But anyway, the Vagias didn't really, you know, affect things. So what I did was I took Maliurg Castle which only had 60 units in it for some reason. I think that it probably became under, you know, came under siege or something like that. We still have, I think we still have Nadar Castle. I'm actually unsure about that. I defended there for, I don't even know how much, but I, well, basically I took about 120 prisoners from the various vassals that would turn up and they would basically just throw themselves, you know, at the walls. I didn't even wait for them to build the siege equipment, but they could have thrown themselves against the walls because obviously we have such a large cavalry army, which I have now fully outfitted in only Saranid Mamluks. Because I did say that we were only going to use Saranid units, but I felt like the Swadian Knights were a pretty good addition because we're obviously assimilating other cultures as we try to unify Calradia once again. And obviously assimilating units such as the Swadians is a, you know, decent idea because we're not getting any deficiency from that. We're not getting any negative effect. So it's pretty cool to be able to do that. And I think I'm going to be continuing to sort of, shall we say, slot in a couple of various units that we gain over the time of our campaign here. So let us renounce our oath. Finally, after all of that, all of that recap, you'll see the state of the map as well, by the way. The Saranids have been doing a pretty decent job at fighting off everyone, but the Rodox have n just declared war about, I don't know, two in-game weeks ago, I think? Yeah, by the way, it was, I think, day 300 and something, 306 or something like that, when I was doing the previous episode, and... Now it's day day 365, I believe. So it's been an absolute, it's been a year. It's been a year since we started, technically, in-game. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Anyway, let's renounce our oath. There we go. All right, so <laughs> we still take his money. Really? We still take his money? That's hilarious. Okay, so renounce your oath and rule your lands, including a Sugan castle in your own name. Yes. And he... What? Uh, I think, yeah, I think that might be a bit of a bug, but yeah. Barney Bertels decided to confer Sugan Castle on Amir Tonju. No, that's not correct. <laughs> that is not correct at all. All right, so who are we going to select here? I think Marnid actually would be a pretty decent idea for a minister because he, I don't think he gets on with some people in our party. And also he has a, I think he has a pretty decent charisma. I'm not entirely sure, but it doesn't really matter anyway. Let's just, let's just appoint Marnid. There we are. No, Barney Bertold's kingdom, that is not going to, that's not going to stand, is it? No. Kingdom of Reformia, yeah, that is nostalgic, if ever I saw it. Okay, so there you go. That's, that's correct, right? Yeah, Kingdom of Reformia, yeah, there we go. Okay, so I don't want it to be Kingdom, Kingdom of Reformia. Oh, there we go, we're already getting a couple of lords defecting to us, which is very nice. Yeah, so I took a Sugan Castle, as you can see here. No, it is Kingdom of Reformia, so that's fine. And I also took Distar Castle, because there was only 130 or so units in there. And I thought, why not? And all of the people that tried to stop us were Kurgits, of course, and the Kurgits, they have a very, very small army capacity at the moment, which is really strange, but anyway, yeah. Oh yes, I, I think uh, someone actually mentioned that in the siege we only lost 10 units? Well, yeah, I mean, that's going to happen, 
that is going to happen because we had the best units. We were using Swadian Knights and Saranid Mamluks, and they're some of the heaviest units you're going to get. And even on a high damage modifier, which is what we have right now, we have normal damage modifiers on. And even on that, you're still only going to lose a very, very small amount because we are the defensive force. And as a result, that gives us the advantage inherently. And then on top of that, obviously, we do have the heaviest armored units. And the entire time, by the way, the entire time that I've been running around here with my 97, I actually had 99 Saranid Mamluks, hilariously enough. Yeah, I have no idea how they are able to level up so fast, but they are. I have uh, another 18 Saranid Horsemen, I think, in Nara's garrison. But in general, most of the garrisons that I have right here are very very eh, they're not very good they're not very good because i didn't really have the time to level up you know the best units ever so i'm gonna have to leave a sugan castle undefended actually do i have to do that i don't think i have to because i think what i'm gonna do is i'm actually going to take beheshtur who is not giving us anything in terms of party skills and i'm actually going to make him a vassal i think Shall we do that? Shall we do that? Maybe. Let's actually just take a look. Yeah, he has two leadership. He's pretty decent. You know, he's a pretty decent unit, so why not? Let's 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 do that. Let's give him a Sugan castle. There you go. He is obviously quite happy with that now. And hopefully he's actually gonna put something there. Is he actually gonna uh, I hope he I hope he garrisons it. It it doesn't it doesn't look like he's gonna garrison it, but maybe it just it's just gonna take him a little bit of time to sort of get oriented and, and things like that. There is another person over there. Hopefully, uh, hopefully Beheshto is gonna be there in time. But yeah, Distar Castle has a very sort of skeleton garrison. They don't it doesn't really have a very good amount of units there. But we are still gaining a pretty decent amount of cash. Oh, by the way, are, are we still at war against the the Saranids? No, we're not. Uh, wait, wait, no, not the Saranids. The Kurgit Khanate, we're not actually at war against them, so technically I didn't even have to worry about these things being attacked. And we can then take advantage of the fact that the Saranids don't really have a very strong front line over here, so maybe we can start to dissect them a little bit. Ah. Interesting. Ah, okay, so now I basically have the world as my oyster and I'm able to basically go anywhere I so desire because obviously the Saranids are the only ones that really have a bone to pick with us now and I think that's a pretty good thing. Okay, I'm pretty excited about this. It's been a long time coming and you know, trust me, I spent a lot of time off screen doing all of these things, fighting countless vassals that wanted to take back all of the castles that I had taken and it was just very annoying because they were just come with like 30 or so units and then it would be an absolutely terrible mountainous area to fight on and oh yeah I tried retreating and going back in yeah I did and it was still just as mountainous it was absolutely awful and yes thankfully I didn't didn't really run out of food too easily uh, my horse died by the way so I had to replace it this is I know it looks exactly the same but this is a different horse hilariously enough and there you go. All right, so we are good, I think. We are actually pretty good. So let's just actually, I just want to show you the garrisons that I have here because, uh, you know, I want you to know that this is this is quite doable, I think, for most people. Anyway, yeah, there you go. So that's what we have there. We have some recruits, some militia footmen. I basically waited for about, I don't know, three to four days of trainer skill, and that basically gave me enough to kind of think, okay, I, you know, it's a pretty decent garrison, and there's Lord Beheshtur. Oh, it seems like, has the Sugan Castle been taken? No, not yet. I'm not entirely sure why he's not at his own fief then, is he? We do have a bunch of people actually defecting to us now, which is fantastic. I don't know where our home base is. Where is our home base? I very much hope it's not a Sugan Castle. Uh, if it's a Sugan Castle, then that's an absolute pain, because it's all the way out of the way. Yeah, so this is where I dropped off my Swadian Knights, and I obviously have some veteran footmen there, and two Master Archers that I rescued, and a couple of Man at Arms, but yeah. Otherwise, everything seems to be pretty secure, with the exception of a Sugan Castle at the moment. Oh! Oh, they're, they're actually offering us peace? Now, this would be a fantastic thing to do if... I needed some time to sort of get my garrisons up and running. Obviously, they're okay. You know, they're not the best, but they're also not the worst. So I'm going to reject this for now, 
just because I want to actually see what happens. I'd like to go in here and see whether this is my main area. I think it is. Yes, it is. Oh, that's fantastic. Very good. All right, so... Mm, let's speak to these guys. Okay, so, ah, no, I, I don't think I'm going to be taking Lord Haringoth. He has minus four relation, but he is a Swedian vassal, so he could technically help us by using his Swedian units to completely dominate the battlefield. But if he's going to be annoying, and if he's going to be like, oh, can I have a thief? Can I have a thief? Can I have a thief all the time? And then obviously that's going to not be, you know, the best idea. So I'm probably going to be pretty choosy about this. Oh no, he's joined the Saranids now. Oh yeah, that's what's going to happen, isn't it? All right, so this guy used to be a Saranid vassal. I'm, I might actually take him just because of that. And ah, Lord Play, he likes us a lot. So I'm going to be taking him too. I don't know whether that really makes any difference, to be honest, but I'm just going to kind of, you know, play it by ear and sort of, you know, use a little bit of common sense, I guess. The little I have of it, shall we say. Okay, so let's give this to Lord Iam, and uh, Lord Play does not like that at all. Beheshter also does not like that. That's hilarious. All right, so Beluga is going to go to Lord Play. Wow, Lord Iam is quite... An annoying fellow, is he not? Probably not going to give him more than a couple of villages, to be honest. Okay, so we're going to give him another village, just so that he's... Wow, he really doesn't gain that much from giving him fiefs, does he? Uh, that's awful. Okay, so Dugan will go to Lord Play, and obviously Beheshter already has a castle, so I personally don't see the necessity to give him one, but maybe I should. Yeah, let's, let's give him one, why not? Yeah, Lord Iam is going to be a problem, so I'm probably going to be indicting him relatively soon. He seems to be quite greedy, which is not necessarily something you want as a quality in some of your some of your vassals. Ah, there we go. It seems like someone else has joined us. Lord Druly. Ah. I think he's a defector from somewhere else, not from the Nords. I think he's actually from Ah, he's from the Vagiers. Shall we take him? Eh, yeah, why not? Why not? Let's take him and then and then we'll see what I can actually I can't actually give him anything at the moment. That is rather amusing. Okay, well we're going to have to take something then, I guess. And Ahun Castle is the closest. Maybe we want to take Halma or... Well, I was going to say Ikemur, but obviously we can't take that. Alright, so let's go off with our 97 Mamluks and see what we can do. Now, I know that Ahun Castle... I think this is a siege tower, isn't it? It's only 131. They have 19 Mamluks here, though, which is quite tricky. Yeah, it is a siege tower as well, so I'm not going to waste my time here. I'd much rather spend time taking Halmar if I can, because it has a it has 131 in Ahun Castle, and Halmar is bound to have something relatively similar, as you can see. 181, so it's only 50 more, which is pretty decent for a ladder town, and it also is, of course maybe going to be a bit of a more favorable layout. We'll see. So let's go in and find out whether we have what it takes to deal with the Saranids themselves. And of course we are going to suffer a couple of morale penalties because we are technically at war against the Saranids, but I actually don't think that's a big deal. I don't think that's too much of a big deal. As long as we keep fighting, and then if, if it does become a big deal, then obviously I can just swap them out for a couple of you know, a couple of Swadian knights and things like that. We are being absolutely murdered by the Saranid archers, however, which is really bad. And I'm kind of a bit worried about being killed here, because obviously we don't have diplomacy. This is completely vanilla in terms of the amount of mods we have installed. And, well, I'm hopeful that I won't get killed, because if I do, then that's going to be a retreat. That's going to be an automatic retreat, and that's going to be pretty bad for us. Okay, I'm going to just try and deal as much damage as I can here. Uh, I really wish I could crouch or duck or something because I'm being shot by some archers over in the, over on the left there, and that's not very nice. Oh, uh, no. Okay, it seems like I might have to sort of maybe just get out of here a little bit because, yeah, oh, uh, uh, are, we, are we actually pushing through? Yes, we are. We are pushing through. Yes, that's what we want to see. Okay, come on now. Let's just try and help them out a little bit on the right side so that we can actually get a bit of a hole here to yeah get through there we go nice nice we have a hole in their defenses okay now I just have to make sure that I actually do survive because newsflash it will probably end the battle if we die and probably I mean 100% it will so oh hello yeah we probably don't want to be there do we yeah so we're gonna lose a bunch of Mamluks that's how it is 
considering we are obviously, you know, attacking, and the defenders do have an overwhelming advantage. And obviously, as I say, we are on a pretty high difficulty too. So obviously that's going to make a bit of a difference. So let's just be a little bit careful. Oh my, okay, this is, this is not good. This is not a good place for me to be at the moment. Yes, yes, okay, oh no. Yeah, these, these sabers they're using, they're actually pretty good because they are faster than what I have equipped at the moment. And obviously my proficiency is not the greatest and my agility is also not great. So obviously, you know, my attack speed is not going to be the best. Anyway, I think we probably have this in the bag, but I've lost 24 Mamluks. Yeah, that's exactly the reason why I have so many because literally every single time I was doing one of those sieges, I was just, oh wow. I really did get killed, that's not very good. But yeah, anyway, the point is is that every time I would do one of those sieges, I would lose a very, very large amount of units. And that's just how it is, you know, that's just how it is. You are going to lose those kinds of units when you are on the offensive push against a faction. And I didn't lose that many, because obviously I never actually fought against anyone in a town just yet. And that's, uh, you know, that's pretty, you know, it's pretty decent that I didn't lose that many. I lost about 15 maximum in Distar Castle, because obviously it was a, you know, it was a, a siege tower. And when I say lost, I mean killed. I actually had about 30 to 40, maybe even 50 wounded, not, not wounded, but like in total taken out. So, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's, it's a bit, a bit, a bit harsh, you know, you don't want to lose that many when you are wanting to continue with a kind of siege spree. Now, obviously, we're going to have to deal with the archers again, which is the main reason why we lost units in the first place, because obviously the Mamluks, they tend not to use their shields, as you can see. They tend not to use their shields. Some of them do, some of them don't, and most of them that are not are obviously causing us to... Wow. Are you serious with that? That is crazy. Okay, that, that, that is absolutely unacceptable. Okay, I'm going to try and take this guy out. Yeah, there we... Oh, no, no, no. I hit him. Oh, I did hit him, but unfortunately... Yeah, it doesn't seem like... I, am, I, am I able to do anything here? Maybe, maybe not. No, it seems like he's moved now. Well, that's unfortunate, isn't it? Oh, well, never mind. It seems like we are actually getting onto the battlements again. I think it's just going to take a little bit of time. If only I hadn't died. Literally, I didn't realize that that was a Mamluk attacking us right there. If we hadn't died, that would have been an absolutely amazing victory because we were already on the battlements. So, yeah. Anyway, what, what I'm going to do, the plan after this, is to go to Nara. Well... Basically, what I'm going to do is, is take this. I'm going to defer appointment of a lord, of course, so that it gets an automatic garrison. And then we are going to be placing our Mamluks in here just to supplement the garrison while I go back to Nara. I'm going to pull out a bunch of units. I don't even know what. I'm just going to get a bunch, whatever they, are, whatever they may be. And then we're going to run around and recruit a bunch. I'm going to do that off screen because that's kind of boring. And then hopefully we'll have a, a reasonable garrison. I'm not looking for 500 to 1,000 units in the garrison. I'm looking for about 150. So if we can make something like that happen, then it will dissuade most of the regular sort of normal-sized vassals from attempting to take it. And, you know, that's actually what has happened with Malia Castle and Distar Castle. And hilariously enough, I've only placed about 80 units in there, so it seems like 80 is enough to sort of deal with the smaller smaller vassals. So that's pretty good. That is pretty good. But yeah, hopefully I'm not going to die this time. But I took 26 damage from that Mamluk, which I'm not really happy about. Which I'm not really happy about. Wow. I got to say. I got to say. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I am. Yeah. Yeah, wow, look at that, we lost 50. 50 Mamluks, ah, ah, yeah. Uh, see, that's the thing, I've never taken something with this large a garrison before, and they always had, well, pretty, ba pretty bad units in there, and we weren't fighting Sarinas, of course, so obviously the Master Archers, they do have a pretty big impact. So I guess I'm going to have to leave Halmar for the next episode and hopefully the garrison won't have recuperated itself too much. I'm going to have to head back to Nara and see what I can do about just trying to replenish our ranks. Maybe I'm going to have to switch things up a little bit and try and recruit from some other factions. 
most notably probably the Swadians, because I don't really want to use other factions that are still active in the game, because that kind of destroys some of the sort of roleplay aspect that we were using with just, you know, using the Saranid units only. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.